Hello, viewers. Welcome back. In this session, we are going to discuss about explicit intents in Android, which is one of the intent types or intent resolution. Now we'll see what is an explicit intent, how to create multiple activities in an application, how to create an in intent with a constructor, and passing values from one activity to another activity, we'll see that in the next session. Now, explicit intents is a way to start a new activity. As we already know, intent is a mechanism to send a message of a description of an action to be performed. It contains a message, a description of an action to be performed. It will contain what to do in that particular message. Here, explicit intents are meant for Internal application messaging means calling an activity of the same class, sorry, same application. So where we'll start a new activity. Here we are going to provide the designated target component by its class name. Means the name activity, whatever you want to call, you're going to provide that particular activity name as a target in the intent constructor. So I'm going to create a simple example here. There is a small label stating that welcome to Ikeda and I want to launch an Android course the moment when I click on launch Android. So the, when the user click on launch Android button, it's going to start a new activity where this is like welcome activity, whatever you call it as. It is going to start Android. Let's start Android. And when you click on the home button, it come, it's again comes to the home button, home page. How we can do that? With the intent constructor. So here an intent constructor contains two parameters. One is the context, nothing but your this keyword in the Java language or maybe the C++, where the context is equals to this, nothing but your current activities context. Class is the target class what you are going to supply. So when you want to start a new activity, we simply call start activity and pass your intent object here. If that particular activity is returning a result, we'll call start activity for result. We have discussed this in our previous session. Now let us create a sample program. Go to file, new, new project, select empty activity, click on next, change your application name to explicit intent or explicit demo. Click on finish button. The Gradle build is running now. Configuring projects. The project has built successfully. Now in any project, the first thing what we have to do is open your layout file. In a split mode, I'm working with this now. For my comfortability, I'm using relative layout. How would you know that when to use relative layout and when to use linear layout? When the when the design is like somewhere one uh, view and another corner of the layout, another view like this, then in that case means the alignment of the children is not identical. Then in that case, we'll go for relative layout. When if the views are one below the other or one beside the other, we'll prefer linear layout. Now, change to relative layout. Text view is there. Remove the constraint parameters or attributes. Here, yeah, there should be a text. It comes from a string reference. Now, I'm just taking that as home text. There is no such text view. Alt enter. Create a new string value. I'm just taking that as welcome to Ikeda Private Limited or Ikeda Learning Portal. Done. Click on OK button. We have seen here, but the content visibility is not enough. So change your text size 
the max we prefer is 24 SP because we already discussed for the text views, we'll use SP instead of DB. So let's make it 22. If you want to change the text color, you can change it. Now the next, I need a button. Open angular bracket button with wrap content. Height is also wrap content. There should be a text on the button. So that I'm going to take from a string reference as usual. Simply I'm taking that as launch button. Create a new string. I'm calling or uh, naming it as launch Android. As we already know, in relative layout, default positioning is top left corner. Let's make it bottom of the screen, which is parent relation. Just you type parent if you don't remember any of the attributes properly. Align parent bottom. It's a Boolean value true, but I want that to be on the right hand side. So in this case, now we are going to assign that on the right hand side again. Parent end. Align parent end true. That has been shifted to the right side corner. All done. Close your button tag. We already know that there is a basic parameter for the functionality, means event handling of a button that is on click. As I'm having only one button click, I'm using well, only one button in this layout, I'm using on click attribute. If you have more than, then go for programmatically in the Java. Now, so the method name I'm going to take it as launch Android. A should be capital. This is my method. Alt enter. So select create launch Android in the main activity. So in main activity, that particular method will be called. So till here, we already know how to do this, right? Whenever the user click on this, it should start a new activity. But do I have that activity in my program so far in my project? So I do not have. I have only single activity called main activity. Now let's create another activity. This is like working with multiple activities. Right click on the package name of the Java, which is the developer package, new. And here, if you are calling only a Java class, select Java class. But Android Studio has given a flexibility. If you are creating an activity, you can select activity. If it is a fragment, you select a fragment. So all Android related ones are prefixed with Android icon. You can see here, all Android icons. Now I want to create an activity which is again an empty activity. Select it. Default, it will give main activity too. Now I'm going to take that simply like welcome activity. Instead of that, I'll take it as Android activity. So generate a layout file as well because I do have a UI also for the second activity, right? So click on finish button. The new activity has been created here with the respective XML means layout file and the Java file. In this, what do I need? Again, the same, right? I need to have a text view and all this. Now change your constraint layout to relate with layout. I need a text view. Open angular bracket. Sorry, capital D. Width wrap content, height is also wrap content. There should be a text. It must come from a string reference. The string is going to be welcome Android text, whatever it is. You can take a lengthiest one as well. Welcome Android TXT. Alt enter is a shortcut key to create a string resource in the things.xml file. I'm saying this as Let's start learning Android development. So again, for the better visibility, I'm taking text size as a 20 SP and with closing tag. And alignment, you can make it exactly at the center. So we can say choose gravity, or you can select the 
relative layouts uh, parameters as well. So what it is, center horizontal, right? Let us don't know what it is. Align parent. So it's not working, right? So simply type center. So you'll see center horizontal group. It has been shifted to the center horizontal. The next, I need to create a button to roll back to the home screen. With this wrap content, it is also wrap content. There should be a text. So Android text, it is a string reference. You can say here home button, home underscore BTN, so that it can be used in the future activities you are going to create as well if you have more than these activities. All data is a shortcut key. I can simply say home. Done. Uh, alignment is pending. Parent relation, align parent end true. And uh, parent bottom is also true. Align parent bottom true. It has been placed at the bottom of the screen. Now let's close your button element. All done. So for the button, we need to have an uh, method name on click. Let's say go to home. So you should follow the Java naming conventions. You need not to give any parentheses because it's a simple name. So G small T capital H capital. All enter. There is no such method is created in the Android activity. So this is why we say Studio is an intelligent platform. It is automatically selecting that Android activity instead of main activity because it has already connected with the Android activity. So the corresponding method is going to be created inside your Android activity. This is fine. Now let's run the project and see whether it is working or not and what we have to do. Gradle build is running. Gradle build is running. Launching activity. Yeah. Welcome to Ikeda Learning Portal. Click on Launch Android. The button is clickable, but no action performed. So go to main activity. Here we already know that when you are working with the explicit intents, we work work with intent constructor. So how it will be intent constructor? Intent in is equals to. So to have an idea how to create a constructor, go to Java constructor topic. You can see your uh, class name, object name, new the constructor class name with the Available parameters or whatever the needed parameters. The same I am going to do it now. I am creating an intent. So intent in or intent is equals to new intent of the constructor I am taking. So this constructor have multiple parameter choices. The first one is the context, nothing but this. Comma the second parameter. You can see here now the parameter options. First one is with no parameters. Second one is only the intent. The third one is with the action, what it should do basically. Next, string action comma URI. The last but one is like what content, sorry, context and the class. So this is what I need. That's why as you are working with explicit intents, the Android Studio understood that this is what you need. That's why it is in the bold text. Remaining all are it seems to be filled up. Now our green color. What is the class basically? Which class you have to start? Android class. You just type one or two letters. Yeah, Android activity dot class is an extension. That's all. End with semicolon because every statement in Java or Android should end with state semicolon. I will start an activity. You're trying to start a new activity, right? We'll call start activity method, which is taking intent as an input. What is my intent here? So the object name is intent. If you take I here, it's going to be I. So except I N T int because it is a predefined keyword. So you can take whatever you want. Let me try by taking int. It will throw you an error. Got it? Because it's a predefined keyword. So you can take I also if you want. So you're starting a new activity. Now once again run your project. Gradle build is running. Applied changes successfully launching. 
Now click on launch Android. It is starting a new activities. Let's start learning Android development. So home. So when I get I click on home, it should go to home. Where should I write the same code inside your Android activity? Our Java file. Same. Create an intent constructor. Intent in is equals to new intent of the context. Nothing but this comma. Sometimes this keyword may not work. You have to take get application context. Method name. The target name is what main activity dot class. Class is the extension. End with semicolon. So as you are starting a new activity, call start activity method. Pass your intent object, which is in. That's all. Now run your project once again. Done. You can home now. It's going back to the home. That is welcome to Ikeda Private Limited. Now let me do a little refinement. So whenever user click on launch button, it's showing like launch Android, right? So where every time the in the task bar or the app bar is showing explicit demo only. So you do not know where you are staying, residing here. So to give the location of the user, I'm going to change this name. So you can do that in your manifest.xml file. What is the second activity? This is your second activity. Inside this, you take label. It's again a string reference. Simply say Android. Let us say welcome to Android. Now do the full run because when you applied any changes or when you when when you did any changes inside your manifest.xml file, you have to do a full run. Now click on launch Android. So this time it is showing welcome to Android. Let's start learning Android development. So you will understand like what is your location in the application with this label in the app bar. So this is how you can change the name of or label of your activity as well. Now click on home. It's coming back. So it, this is how you can go forth and back. And uh, if you have one more activity, so simply go to your Java package name, right click, create a new activity. And again, inside that activity, create your layout, whatever you are looking for. And inside that layout, add your elements looking for. There is any button, add on click attribute, do the same thing. Go to your uh, corresponding Java file, create an intent constructor call that particular activity using start activity method. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Let's catch up in the next session.